Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask you to stand as we acknowledge the entrance of the honoree uh, for this evening's proceedings, Mrs. Verona E. Neal. of me I'm only one but not alone my finest day is yet unknown I broke my heart for every game to taste the sweet I face the pain I rise and fall much remains Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much. Right. Um, I want to really send a, a really warm welcome to everyone here present this evening to the honorary ceremony of Mrs. Verona E. Neal. My name is Orain Lewis, and I'm the president of the Hopewell Primary School Past Student Association. I also want to specially welcome those who are joining in by online facility. Welcome. 
Sorry, can everybody hear me? Right. Okay, thank you. Right. It is with great pride and humility that I stand here witnessing and partaking in this wonderful ceremony for someone who has given so much. This evening's program includes a number of greetings, addresses from our guest speaker, and presentations to our honoree. We have a few special guests here with us this evening, which I would like to introduce to you as I take you through the list. First, we have our Master of Ceremony for the evening, Mr. Nelson Barton. We also have with us Mr. Otis Brown, who's not here with us, but will be sending greetings through a video recording. We have Mr. Jasper Gabriel, who is the immediate past president for JTA, who is sitting in for Mrs. Georgia War Richards, who is the principal of the primary, Ponside Primary School. We also have with us, or should have with us, the Honorable Floyd, Mr. Floyd Green. We also have with us Pastor Jeffett Williams from the William Spiel Seventh-day Adventist Church, and Mr. Sean Graham, principal of the Magotty High School. We also have with us Mrs. Winsome Blair, Reverend Colmy Sims, pastor of the Good News CME Church, and past students from here and overseas, those who are watching on live streams, as I said earlier, and also to the members of the Hopewell Primary School Past Student Association Executive Body, members of the audience, and Mrs. Audrey Cole Foster, Vice Principal of the Black River Primary School, Ms. Carol, Mrs. Carolyn Legister Bennett, Vice Principal of the Black River Primary School, and Mr. Eric McLean, who is Principal of Mountainside Primary School. Welcome to everyone. I am going to, without further ado, hand over to our Master of Ceremony for the evening. I will, however, give you a little bit of his background, so if you'd like to bear with me just a few seconds while I take you through that. Our Master of Ceremony is Jamaican by birth, married with two adult children, born in Barbara Hall, St. Elizabeth, and grew up also in Stonefield of St. Elizabeth. His education background started off at the Pondside Primary School, then to the Hopewell Primary School, then on to Monroe College, and then on to the University of the West Indies. His employment, career, his employment career history started off in 1981 through to 1985, where he was a producer, scriptwriter, presenter of the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation. In 1987, he was a copywriter of Linda Foot Conan Belding Limited. And from 1987 to 2000, he was a personal officer to human resources manager at Alcan Jamaica Company. In 2001, between the months January and March, he was a human resource manager for the National Land Agency. Between 2001 and 2003, he was a human resource manager of J. Ray and Nevia Limited, Appleton Estate. And in 2003, 2010, I'm actually getting exhausted <laughs> reading out the list of accomplishments of our, M our Master of Ch uh, Ceremony. He was um, the employee relation Employee Relations Specialist of Human Resource Manager of Noranda Jamaica Bauxite Partners, formerly Kaiser Jamaica Bauxite Company. And from 2011 to 2016, he was the Assistant Vice President, Human Resources Administration of the Port Authority of Jamaica and Director of Human Resource at Industrial Relations, KCT Services Limited. 2017 to 2019, he was a human resource specialist for Giscoll Park, Jamaica. And finally, 2019 to present, he is a managing director of Cross, Cross for Conflict Resolution and Organizational Supporting Services. He's also heavily involved in the community where he's in, heavily involved in church and youth camp related activities. He was a former board member, Placement and Career Services, University of the West Indies, and Chairman of Board of Human Resources Subcommittee for Knox Community College. He is a current board member of the Ocean View Bible Camp, and he's also interested in sports, especially boxing, which he hastened to add that he only likes it from the sideline. <laughs> he's also interested in writing, poetry, 
and most importantly, studying the Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hand over to you our master of ceremony for the evening. Please put your hands together for Mr. Nelson Barton. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My worst fears have been realized. You know, I know that a lot has changed since we attended, Mon uh, attended Hopewell. And I was only optimistic that ladies and gentlemen would have covered everybody inside here. But let me try again. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Thank you very much. You see, so much has changed that nowadays when I'm introducing my family, for example, I have to say, this is my son, this is my daughter. My son has always been the son, my daughter has always been the daughter. And we are the parents, this is the mother, and I'm the father. She has always been the mother, and I've always been the father. Things have changed so much. You have to be very careful. You try to sign on to an Instagram account nowadays, and they ask you, male, female, or other. When we were going to Hopewell, there was no such thing as other. You were either male or you were female. Things have changed a lot. But we'll come back to that if we need to. In the meantime, I would like to invite Mrs. Judine Holness Daly, Secretary of the Hopewell uh, it's the Hopewell Past Students Association, I take it. Um, and uh, we have an opening hymn, but I'm assuming that she'll be leading us through the opening hymn and into the devotion. Mrs. Uh, Holness Daly, are you? There, there she is. There's a very big difference between a past student and an old student. She's a past student, I'm an old student. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, should I invite everyone to stand so that we can have the opening hymn, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us for our youth and roles prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast brought us thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast bought us thine, we are. We are thine, do thou befriend us. Be the guardian of our way. Keep thy flock from sin, defend us. Seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Thou hast promised to receive us, poor and sinful though we be. Thou hast mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and part to free. Blessed Jesus, Blessed Jesus, early let us turn to Thee. Blessed Jesus, blessed 
Dear Jesus, early let us turn to Thee. Early let us seek Thy favor. Early let us do Thy will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with thy love our bosoms fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, Blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, loved us still. Remain standing as we bow our head in prayer. Most righteous and eternal Father, Lord, we thank you for this evening. We thank you, God, for everything that you have done for us. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace and your mercy. As we come today, Lord, we ask for your continual blessings and guidance upon our lives. Bless our honoree at this moment and her family. Father, give her the strength daily to do your will. Father, we ask that your will will be done in this ceremony and we pray that you will continue to be with us. Let there be no accident or mishap in any way and we pray for a safe journey back home. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done and continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Just a short meditation passage as we embarked on a journey that was well lived. We praise the Lord. Sorry, I'm a church person. We can get the praise the Lord up in here still. We praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. Nice. It's always a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Somebody said, for all his benefits towards us. And at this moment, I just want to point out from Philippians 3, from verse 13 to 14. And Paul remind us that, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. And he thus reminded us to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in God in Christ Jesus. And due to that little passage, I want to implore us all, do not forget to press. We praise the Lord. It may seem difficult, but it looks impossible at times, but press. You know, why should we forget our past? It is because our future is always more important. Our future deals with the is, but our past deals with the was. So let us not focus on the past, but let us focus on our future and continue to press. We can be assured that in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. I want you to turn to your neighbors and tell them, them. Let us continue to press. Despite depression, let us press because God is a present help always in the time of trouble. So I want you to high five the person next to you. Tell them just press. Don't Tonight, my wonderful audience, we will continue to press. God bless you. It's the start of a wonderful night. Thank you very much, Mrs. Holness Daly. Uh, let me just take a moment to congratulate the persons who handled the little mishap we had here. If you were not here when it happened, you would not have realized anything have happened. Look at it. We wouldn't have realized that thing. They, they did fairly well, and I'm happy for that. Uh, you know, these uh, 
kind of reunion type things. They have some interesting side lights. Um, I'm looking at the audience and I'm seeing faces that look a little familiar, but I'm not absolutely sure because we're talking about 50 years ago. And these things happen. You wonder, do I know that person? Is it? Yeah, maybe it is, maybe it's not. These things happen. I'm reminded of a, of a lady who went to a reunion and she saw a wrinkled old man looking, as you would say in Jamaica, he looked mash up. And she looked at him and she recognized him. And she said, wow, boy, the years have not been so kind to him at all. And she went across to him and she said, Shane Brown? And he said, yes. And she said, you don't remember me? said, no, I don't remember you. He said, Miriam Wilkinson, you were in my class. He said, oh, what subject did you teach? <laughs> we have to be so careful. I just spoke with uh, Mr. Graham, who was our guest speaker for the afternoon, and he went to Monroe, the same school that I went to, and I asked him when he left. He said something like 1995. I said, I left in 1976. <laughs> it's interesting to know that sometimes you meet people and you look at them and you realize that when they left school, when you left school, not only were they not born, but their parents were probably not born, <laughs> you know? But the, the refreshing thing is that when you look, you realize that they don't look much younger than you. <laughs> I'm very pleased to be here this afternoon. Very, very pleased. You don't know how pleased I am. Because, you see, Mrs. Neal, and I'm probably calling her Mrs. Neal for the first time, is not just someone who I happen to have heard about. Mrs. Neal and I went to Hopewell at the same time. Not only did we go to Hopewell at the same time, but we lived in the same lane. So in the evenings after we did what we call lessons in those days, I think we were, what was it, JC or something? I don't know. But it was lessons. We were doing civics and those things, which people don't do anymore. We would walk home together in the night, past the... I guess a fancy name now is cemetery, but it was bearing ground in those days. <laughs> we would pass, and looking back, I like to think that I protected her from doppage, rolling calf, Abna. Anybody know what Abna is? I protected her from all of those things, and I made sure that when she pointed over the bearing ground, that she bit every one of her fingers. So she would bite. And I would count one, two, three. Because you have to make sure everyone is bitten, you know, because otherwise what? All of them will drop off. So I have a question for Mr. Neil. But I don't answer it to Mr. Neil. I'm just going to ask you the question. The question is, if when you met Verona, if she had no fingers, would you still have married to her? Don't answer. Don't answer. Because <laughs> these are the kinds of things that cause the divorce rate to just suddenly go up, you know. So don't answer. Mrs. Neil, please, don't, don't press him for an answer. Don't press him. Let's leave it at that. I just ask the question and leave it right there. You know, it's funny, though, that during those years, which were many years ago, not once did I imagine that I would be at a function many years later in honor of Mrs. Neil. Not once did I imagine, I'm sure she didn't imagine neither, that in 2022, at the age of at the age of the age that we are <laughs> that here we are here we would be having this kind of function so some years ago i know there was an advertisement on television and uh, newspapers and all over and the tagline was you have come a long way baby now i can't call mrs neil baby on any level but I can say you have come a long way, Mrs. Neal. And it sounds like the beginning of a poem. 
And I wonder if I can craft something from that. You have come a long way, Mrs. Neal, in how you act, in how you think, in how you feel. And though it seems like only yesterday you were on the Hopewell play field at play, this is not something that you imagine. This is something very real. You have come a long way, Mrs. Neal. And after all is said and done, the road has been walked, the race has been run. The support from God and family and friends that you have received, I know that that support you'll be relieved to know that no one can ever rob or steal, no matter how they think or feel. You have come a long way, Mrs. Neal. The end. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I'd like to invite Mr. Otis Brown. He is from, he's the regional director of the Ministry of Education, uh, Youth and Information, to bring greetings. Is, is it the one that's going to be projected? Yes, it's going to be projected. So uh, let's put our hands together, even though he's not here, but he's going to be presenting. Chairman of the Board of Management, Principal, all members of staff of Hopewell Primary School, past members of staff of this institution, parents and guardians, students who may be present at this evening's honoring ceremony, all other attendees at the ceremony in honor of stalwart educator, Mrs. Verona Emil, good evening. It is my inestimable pleasure this evening, on behalf of the Ministry of Education and Youth, particularly Region 5, to bring greetings in this very important honoring ceremony for Mrs. Verona E. Neal, an educator who has served the Jamaican education system for 42 long years. Ladies and gentlemen, the story is told somewhere in St. Luke chapter 17, where Jesus cleansed the 10 lepers, and of the 10, only one returned to say thanks. Jesus asked a question that in my mind is very instructive. The question was, did I not cleanse ten lepers? Where are the nine? I therefore want to commend the members of the Past Students Association of Hopewell Primary School, the President and all other members working along with the President for having this function staged this evening to say thank you to Mrs. Verona E. Neal for her sterling service to education particularly to Hopewell Primary School. Mrs. Neal, over these 42 years, you would have touched the lives of many young people. You would have been a mother, a mentor, a caregiver, a counselor, a confidant. So many other roles you would have played other than just being a classroom teacher. We want to thank you wholeheartedly for your service to education, for your service to nation building, for being the parent that many children who attended Hopewell High School, Hopewell Primary School rather, I'm sorry, did not have. Now that you have retired, I want to let you know that it is time for you to put on new in quotes tires and continue that journey of service, but only to the extent that you think 
you can manage. Because the truth is, with your years of experience, with your years of service, there is much more that Jamaica can get from you in terms of education, your contribution to education, so that we can continue to build our nation through this particular service. Mrs. Neal, it is your time of retirement and I want you to bask in it. And we wish for you God's good health. We wish for you even the creation of greater wealth. You are not too old for this at all. We know that with your creative mind and your creative energies, those experiences that you have had over these 42 long years, you are in a position to create even greater wealth and to advise the younger educators in this education system in Jamaica and we love what they too can do to grow and become better professionals on the job in Jamaica. May God continue to bless you. And I want you to know that we are praying for you and that we deeply and sincerely appreciate all that you have done for education in Jamaica. Mrs. Neal, God bless you and keep on keeping on in the name of the Lord. Thank you. We say thanks to Mr. Otis Brown, and no doubt we join in the sentiments that he shared, and we join in the commitment that we will continue to pray for Mrs. Neal. I just want to ask a quick question. I attended Hopewell Primary School uh, by my poor memory. In the years 1967 until 1969, are there persons here who attended during that time? Just to be sure. Can I see your hands? The hands of the persons who were at Hopewell at the time when I was here. Just wanted to be clear so I can sit and look and see if I remember you. I can't remember the person with the mask, but I will try to remember those that I can see. Mr. Ed Nemhard from the Williamsfield Seventh-day Adventist Church. I hope he's here and he will present an item at this time. After his item, we have greetings from Mrs. Georgia War Richards. She's a regional officer from the Jamaica Teachers Association. Uh, is Mr. Nemhard here? Over to you, Mr. Nemhard. Sorry, I, I didn't hear that. Oh, somebody is asking for a few minutes. But then if Mrs. Richards was here, then we would have taken her instead then. But she isn't. She isn't. So maybe we could just just wait a few minutes. Uh, two minutes, is there? All right. And then we'll have Mr. Nemhard from the Williamsfield Seventh-day Adventist Church. He's not ready yet, but we can give him a hand from now. Good evening, everyone.
Thank you very much, Mr. Nem Let's give him another round of applause. <laughs> you raised me up, he says, and we are here to honor Mrs. Verona Neal. I have a feeling that she might not have achieved what she has achieved had it not been for the fact that for some years, and we will soon find out how many years, she has had the support of uh, Mr. Neal. Uh, can you say, uh, one of you, how many years you have been married? 48 years. Let's congratulate them and put our hands together. <laughs> uh, many years ago, and it really was many years ago, I was at some function, and I said that I was married for 30 years. That's a long time ago. And I heard somebody in the audience say something like, do you see a woman? Yes. Yeah, for some persons, it's a long time to be married to the same person. But a lot of things come into play when you're married. You have to understand uh, for example, earlier on we mentioned there are certain questions you don't answer in order to remain married for a long time. <laughs> you know, there was, a, there was a husband and a wife who they weren't talking to each other. So uh, this husband decided that, well, 
He's not talking to his wife, but he needed to catch a plane the next morning at 5 o'clock. Uh, so he said, how am I going to do this? Well, he wrote her a little note, and he put it on her pillar. And he says, please wake me at 5 tomorrow morning. Well, he woke up next morning at 6.30. And he said, what's going on? I, I left a note for her to wake me. And he looked at his pillow. He saw a note that says, wake up, it's 5 o'clock. <laughs> I don't know if Mrs. War Richards is here, or Mr. Our Honorable Floyd Green. If they are not, we're going to take things in a slightly different order, and we're going to invite Mr. Leon Williams. Uh, in fact, let's invite first Mr. Oren Lewis, president of the Hopewell School Past Students Association, to bring greetings, and then he'll be followed by Mr. Leon Williams from the Williamsfield Seventh-day Adventist Church. Mr. Oren Lewis. Our Master of Ceremony, our distinguished honoree, other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, very pleasant good evening. Again, as I stated earlier, my name is Lorraine Lewis, and I'm the president of the Hopewell Primary School Past Student Association. And on behalf of the entire Past Student Association team, it gives me great pleasure to extend sincere greetings to all of you. The Past Student Association aims to work collaboratively with the school that is so near and dear to so many of our hearts. The executive body has collated a list of objectives that we aim to achieve within this great institution. However, we deemed it our number one priority to honor those who have devoted many years of service to the Hopewell Primary School and touch and mold the lives of many, including mine. Mrs. Neal, we want to thank you in abundance for your hard work, dedication and support during your tenure at the Hopewell Primary School. You, along with other stalwarts of the Hopewell Primary School, have brought the school through many challenging times and managed to produce no doctors, nurses, lawyers, teachers, managers, human resource specialists, and um, countless list of professionals who are making enormous contribution to society. Thank you for imparting the right skills and knowledge to all those students who are fortunate to have you as a teacher, a mentor, a counselor, and also to ensure that the rod of correction was applied when required. I, dis I distinctly remember you being at present at major activities within the school, including field trips, exam preparations, and the unforgettable sports day championing roachers roachers can they beat us no <laughs> no 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 championing roach house to victory but that's only when heinz house and warren house would allow it i also want to pause whilst being mindful of the presence of your husband mr neil that mrs neil you are looking absolutely radiant this evening can i get a round of applause from the audience please I am sure that this is indeed a testament for the positive influence and impact you have had with so many people within the education field. So, Mrs. Neal, on behalf of the Past Student Association, past and present students, staff and other members of the Hopewell and adjoining district, every single person present here this evening, we simply want to say to you, thank you, thank you, and God bless you. Good afternoon, everyone. Mm -hmm. 
since I start for the kingdom since my life is controlled since I gave my heart the long Start for the kingdom, and since my life is controlled, since I gave my heart to Jesus, the longer I serve Him. The sweeter we go, good I serve him, the sweeter he goes, the more than I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart. Overflows the longer I serve him, the sweeter he goes. Store each day my way get bright to and higher the long good I serve him the sweeter it goes the longer I serve him the sweeter it goes the more than I love him more love he bestows well each day is like heaven my heart overflows the longer I serve him the sweeter it goes each day is like heaven my heart overflows the longer I serve him the sweeter he goes sweeter Thank you very much, Mr. Williams. Let's put our hands together for him again. Neither Mr. Leon Williams nor Mr. Ed Nemhard will fall in the category of the young lady, I'm told, who asked the Lord some questions at one time. She said, Lord, will there be complete peace on earth? The Lord said, not in your lifetime. She was aspiring to be a singer. And she said to him, Lord, will you be able to get rid of crime in the country? He said, oh, not in your lifetime. And she said, Lord, 
Will I be a successful singer on the international stage? He said, mm, not in my lifetime. <laughs> Mrs. Georgia War Richards is here. She is happy to be counted among the persons who are here to uh, celebrate the achievements of Mrs. Neal. There, there was a man who sent his son once, you know, to count his cows in the morning after the cows had been left in the pasture all night. Now, he had 32 cows. But when the young man, his son, returned, he said, I counted 31. He said, oh, my goodness, they have stolen one of my cows. The son said, well, I don't know, but there was another little one there. He was running around so much I couldn't get to count him. We are happy to be here. We are happy to welcome Mrs. War Richards. She is a regional officer for the Jamaica Teachers Association, and she will bring greetings. Let's put our hands together for her. Master of Ceremony, Mr. Nelson Barton, guest speaker, Mr. Sean Graham, honorary Mrs. Neal and Mr. Neal, and I'm sure you'll permit me on this occasion to rename them JTA's Bessies. <laughs> Colleague, teachers, and friends, good afternoon. I'm sure all of us who are from the JTA will understand our protocol that, that once there is a member of the presidential corps in our midst, then all other persons from the JTA give way to them to speak. And so it is our situation this evening we have our immediate past president, a man from the region, by the region, and of the region, Mr. Jasper Gabriel. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say good evening, to greet you, to say congratulations to Mr. and Mrs. Neal, and to applaud team for putting this activity together and just invite to greet us and to address us the teachers association our immediate past president mr jasford gabriel thank you Thank you very much, Madam Regional Officer, South Central, Mrs. Georgia War Richards, our Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Barton, my friend, guest speaker, um, Mr. Sean Graham, the Mr. and Mrs. Neal. You know, so great to be in your presence this afternoon. My wonderful colleagues and friends, I greet you well. I need to hear greetings. So let me try again. I greet you well. Yeah. Um, must extend apologies for being a little late. I mean, but of course, we had to pull out all the stops to be here this afternoon because we are celebrating the life, you know, the, the, the ministry, the service of a great woman. Would you agree? Of course. You know, and... It would be remiss of JTA not to represent because Mrs. Neal, like, like Georgia just said, you know, we can say JTA Bessie, many decades, almost three decades, you know, of dedicated service to the Jamaica Teachers Association. I suspect we have quite a few teachers here this afternoon, you know, and as I prepare to demit the presidency, you know, I want to use the opportunity as well just to say thanks to everyone, you know, that gave me your support um, during my time of presidency. It has been a very interesting journey, but God is good, you know, and I give thanks to him for the opportunity 
to serve, you know, and I encourage all of us to continue to play our part to make education better and stronger, you know, in, in our country. Before I, I share a few reflections, you know, I like humor. And I always say teachers just look so young and fresh and strong, although sometimes they can't see what's going on inside. But there's, almost, there's always so much to laugh about in the classroom to keep us young and fresh and vibrant. And so while I was walking in, I reflected quickly on, um, some of you heard this story already. Probably Mrs. Neal knows it. Back in the days, you remember we used to do Bible knowledge in school? Eh? Yeah, so this teacher now um, in the school asks, who broke down the walls of Jericho? So the little boy said, it's not me, teacher, it's not me. So the teacher went, was concerned because Bible knowledge is so important and it's important that we have a good understanding of scripture. So the teacher went to the principal to express the concern, you know, that the knowledge of the Bible is so lacking. So when the principal related this, the teacher related this story to the principal, the principal said, but, but I know that, but that boy's parents, and they are wonderful people. If he said he didn't break down the wall of Jericho, he didn't do it. <laughs> so you can imagine the teacher was even more flabbergasted. Went to the regional office. If it's my school, the regional office is almost next door to Manchester to, to express the grave concern to the regional director. Would you believe what regional director said? That's one of the best principals in the region. If he said the boy didn't break down the wall, that means he didn't do it. So Alexander Bustamante was minister at the time. So the parent journeyed all the way to Kingston to express the grave concern. So enter the great Alexander Bustamante. She shared the concern. Alexander said, well, I don't care who brought down the walls of Jericho. Uh, I mean, so we give God thanks, you know, there is, despite the challenges in the education system, and the challenges increase daily, the psychosocial, you know, the, the spiritual, you know, and the, the learning loss, but yet we are strategically positioned, you know, to make, to make a difference. And it's in this kind of context that we have to pause you know, to say thanks to Mrs. Veronica, Verona Neal. You know, she has dedicated, you know, so much of her life and expertise, you know, to the molding of lives. And when we think of so many years, you know, it's thousands of lives that would have been impacted. And so on behalf of the Jamaica Teachers Association, Mrs. Neal, we want to say to you, God bless you, job well done. We love you. So today we celebrate a stalwart of the teaching profession, Mrs. Verona E. Neal, who taught for over 42 years. She wore many hats. Yeah, go ahead. That's a long time. That's four decades. She wore many hats, especially that of her association, with which she was secretary and treasurer of the Pedro Plain District Association. Mrs. Nee left her mark on the teaching fraternity and her impact has surpassed that of just her community. I cannot help but mention the parable of the pencil. It fits this memorable occasion. The pencil maker took the pencil aside just before placing it in the box. There are five things you need to know, he told the pencil. Before I send you out into the world, always remember them and you will become the best pencil that you can be. So get ready to write. Number one, you will be able to do many great things, but only if you allow yourself to be held in someone else's hand. Two, you will experience a painful sharpening from time to time, but you will need that in order to become a perfect pencil. You'll be able to correct any mistake you might make. Number four, the most important part 
you will always be is what's inside. Number five, on every surface, you must leave your mark. No matter what the condition, you must continue to write. The pencil understood and went into the box with the purpose, with purpose in his heart. The one sum that can never be calculated so easily is measuring the contribution that Mrs. Neal has made to her school and to her country. Teacher occupies a position of great trust and sensitivity. They are charged with responsibility to lead young minds into the mysteries of life. The association expresses our gratitude to you, Mrs. Neal, for, for all you have done for the teaching profession, knowing that aside the knowledge you gave, you led by example. Today, Mrs. Neal, you have turned a corner in your life. But of course, retirement is not the end of the line. Retirement should be a happy time, a creative time like every other stage of life. It is a period when you have the opportunity to do the things you always wanted to do but didn't have the time because of work. It is time for enjoying friends and reviving friendships. It is a time for talking and thinking and reflecting. It is the sincere wish of all of us gathered here today that you, Mrs. Neal, will have many long years to enjoy the well-earned reward of your work in the teaching profession. May God continue to bless you and may those who come behind you find you faithful. Could we all put our hands together for Mrs. Steele? And of course, those who know about the JTA know that JTA always come bearing gifts. Yeah? And so there is a nice plaque here. Um, Certificate of Appreciation awarded to Verona Neal for 42 years of dedicated service to education and nation building. Signed by our President, Winston Smith, and our current Secretary General, Dr. Mark Nicely. Dated August 3, 2022. We say thanks to Mrs. War Richards and to Mr. Gabriel. Uh, let me just check something here. Uh, Mrs. Neal has taught for 42 years. Let me see the hands of the persons here who have taught at all. 42 years, 42 months, even 42 minutes. Anybody? I see one or two or three. <laughs> I see some hands going up now. We, when we were going to school, we took teaching for granted. And we thought it was just another job. And as Mr. Gabriel had po has pointed out, there are many challenges. I taught for about six months. Uh, I think it was six months, and yes, there are challenges. I remember a story, but this is not from my experience. Again, it's from the... Uh, Bible knowledge experience where a student was asked, why did Jesus die? He said, I don't know. You don't know why Jesus died? No, I don't know. So the teacher confronted the father of the child and said, 
would you believe your son didn't know why Jesus died? The father said, I didn't even know the man was sick. <laughs> when, when I was teaching, and I, this is a real story. There was a particular general who in a war, he lost the war because the night before the major battle, his army was infected by a massive outbreak of chicken pox. So I pose a question in the history test. Why did General so-and-so lose the war? And the little boy responded, because on the night before the major battle, they were attacked by a massive chicken fox. <laughs> but I tell you one though, which I, I, it is a tricky one because uh, this was at the prep school. And I was doing synonyms, you know, the words that mean the same. So most children were saying tall and high, pretty and beautiful and so on. And one little boy said, drunk and black up. And you know, I couldn't tell him he was wrong. <laughs> I couldn't tell him he was wrong. These are some of the challenges. Some are challenges, but some are also stress busters, stress relievers that we experience as we go through the process of teaching. Now, the Honorable Floyd Green, the Member of Parliament for Southwest St. Elizabeth, should have been here. He's not here. So we're going to go to an item which I believe you might welcome. Yes. It's dinner. Yes. We're going to go to that item. But before we have dinner, I'm going to ask Pastor Jeffett Williams from the Williams Field, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, to give thanks for the meal. Let us reverently bow our heads for a prayer. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. we ask your blessings now upon this sumptuous meal that we are about to partake of. May it be palatable, appetizing, and nourishing to our bodies as we eat to the joy, health, and happiness of Sister Verona Neal. Bless those hands that prepared in Jesus' name. Honorary Mr. Master of Ceremonies and all, all of the protocols observed. Uh, I am Carl White. And I just received a message from the minister, Floyd Green, who has asked me to extend his apologies to the honoree, the members of the Hopewell Greenfield community. Uh, he was called upon suddenly, and as a result of that, will not be able to make it on time to the function, and he has asked me to apologize uh, to all. I will also, if you will oblige me, um, in my capacity of uh, council caretaker for the Peter Plains Division, to extend greetings to a stalwart, a trailblazer, someone who gave hope Education is one of the things that empowers people and gives them hope. And it's not just because she was at Hopewell, but in 1982, as a student at Newell Secondary School, I met her sister. We used to call her Miss Morrison, then later became Mrs. Stevenson. And then later, met her through activities in the district association. And then even later, when I went back and taught at Newell, 
through Mr. Neal and engagement in sports in the district association, came to know Mrs. Neal very well. And you know, I believe every person here knows that over her years, she has blazed a trail of excellence. She has given hope. to many children. The children of Greenfield and Fall Charles and Williamsfield and Hopewell. Children as from far as Pondside were given hope at Hopewell through her many years of service. And I want to say to you, Mrs. Neal, this evening, that as you relax as you recline as you reminisce on the many years of service and the hope that you've given to so many i want to say to you right across the globe the lives that you have touched by being a teacher are blazing their own trails of excellence. And I'm going to ask you to feel proud, feel good about the trail that you blaze. Thank you. Thank you for serving. Thank you for serving our community well. You have set an example that those of us who are still actively serving can proudly embrace. Thank you. Okay, we say thanks to Dr. Carl White. He's a counselor caretaker for the Pedro Plains Division, I believe. And we say thanks to, to Pastor Jeffett, who gave thanks for the meal I appreciate the fact. I remember the words that uh, the pastor gave, and I endorse the wishes that the meal will be palatable, appetizing, and nourishing. And I appreciate the fact that the grace that he said was not as long as one that I heard once. I didn't even hear the end of it because the person started by giving thanks for the meal, gave thanks for the persons who prepared it, Gave thanks for the farmers who sold them the produce. Gave thanks for the people who sold the farmers the fertilizer. And everything mashed up from, from there. Nobody heard anything else. I am aware that the head table is going to be served the meal. I thought that everybody else would be served buffet style, but I'm not absolutely sure now how it's going to work. Can someone please explain? Is everybody going to be served while they are seated? No, okay. So the head table is going to be served because we look hungrier than everybody else. <laughs> it's, no, it's not a preferential treatment. We just look hungry. And the other persons are going to be served buffet style in that direction. How it's going to operate is that uh, we're just going to take this table first, then that table then this table, then that table, then this table, then that table. I, I encourage you to just be vigilant to see how it's flowing. If it's not flowing as smoothly as uh, we would want it to flow, then I will intervene. Otherwise, I will not. Enjoy your meal, everyone.
so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I traveled each and every highway and more much more than this I did it my way regrets I've had a few but then again too few to mention I did what I had to do, saw it through without exemption. I planned each charted course, each careful step along the byway. More, much more than this, I did it. My way Yes, there were times I'm sure you knew When I bit off More than I could chew But through it all When there was doubt I ate it up And spit it out I find it all so amusing to think I did all that, and may I say, not in a shy way, oh no, oh no, not me, I did it my for what is a man? What has he got? If not himself, then he has not to say the things he truly feels, and not the words of one who kneels. The record shows. Goes my heart beating, cause you are the reason I'm losing my sleep. Please calm down. There goes my mind racing, and you are the reason that I'm. 
I'm still breathing I'm hopeless now I climb every mountain I swim every ocean Just to be with you Fix what I broke Or cause I need you to Turn back the clock I'd make sure the light defeated the dark I'd spend every hour of every day Keeping you safe And I'd climb every mountain And swim every ocean Cause I need you to see you are the reason. Natural beauty, you know. Tell, no, I never been someone shy until I seen the rise. Still, I had to try. Yeah. Oh, yes. Let me get my words right and then approach you. Woman, I'll treat you like a man is supposed to. You'll never have to cry. No. I know everyone can relate to when they find a special someone. And she's royal, yeah, so royal. And I want her in my life. I never know anyone so one of a kind, no. The way she moves to her own. She has the qualities of a queen. She's a queen. Ooh, ooh, what a natural beauty. No need to make up to be a cutie. She's a queen. She's a queen. And when they ask what a good woman's made of, she's not afraid and ashamed of who she is. She's right. So royal, and I need her in my life. I never knew anyone 
So one of a kind Until the night that I see you rise So supreme. I can see it in her eyes, the way she smiles. Hey, yes, I and I, I know the king and queen crown, see I'm tired, so I never leave your side. Just live with me through the trial times. And she says she no mine. All right, I know good man is hard to find. And she can't about that giant line. That's why she has no ties at this time. Yeah. I know many men are trying. But she needs to be more than wine and dine. Because she's royal. Yeah. So royal. And I want her in my life. So divine, the way she moves to her own beat. She has the qualities of a queen, so supreme. Ooh, Good night again, everyone. Um, you can now join the buffet line. I'm going to ask this row and follow the next table and then the other side, all right? So this table, the side first. All of this, this side. So we're doing it this side, then that side, and this side, and until we are completed.
up with the sentence of a woman. Can I have the other table, please? The table right here. Can we have this table right here in the middle, please? Where a pastor here is sitting? Right, that, this table. Your back when it's all done, it's all good when you're 
Can I have this table now, please?
Can I have the table, um, the third table from this side, please? Can I have the third table from the side, please, over the side?
Can we have the table at the extreme back on this side? Can we have the last table now from this side and that will complete our
More music on trendybeats.com. And I've been living fast life, but I see it in slow. Oh no, and you see my lifestyle, I got G's in the tub. See many people there outside where they feed man's obo. Oh no, I mean, I stand the defender like Joseph Yobo. That girl says she won't Netflix at you. So I just get even one. If you fall in the Kelly satin, yeah. you go to a breakfast, I'm not capping. Yeah. Can you see drip pool, I'm not catching. Yeah. I'm not faking this, no fugazi. Yeah. You see these feelings, I'm not catching. Yeah. I'm on quest and feet, I just want it. Happiness, ah, yeah, yeah. if I broke now my business, yeah, yeah. I'ma show you you go right. More music on trendybeats.com. And I've been living fast life, but I see it in slow. Oh no, and you see my lifestyle, I got G's in the tub. See many people there outside where they feed man's obo. Oh no, I mean, I stand the defender like Joseph Yobo. That girl says she won't Netflix at you, so I just get even one. If you fall in the Kelly satin, yeah. you go to a breakfast, I'm not capping. Yeah. Can you see drip pool, I'm not catching. Yeah. I'm not faking this, no fugazi. Yeah. You see these feelings, I'm not catching. Yeah. I'm on quest and feet, I just want it. Happiness, yeah, yeah. if I broke now my business, yeah, yeah. I'ma show you you go right. Yeah, yeah. All I care for the night, yeah. no, no, no. Happiness, yeah, yeah. Yeah. if I broke now my business, yeah, yeah. I'ma show you you go right. Yeah, yeah. All I care for the night. I find the be the reason why your baba want to jealous me. If you want to take I'm serious, I they do to speed. No fit to resonate, I'm on a different frequency. Uh -huh. I don't think it's necessary. I'll be done with just somebody that could do like me. When I be like Musana coming off the right wing, I got to your different that you no need to tell me. I'm a finesse. You know, send me a must not. I go carry go. If me had the money past you, if you're not careful, oh, for nice, you know, send me a must Like a lay out, carry go. If me had the money past you, if you're not careful, oh, 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 oh,
Ladies and gentlemen, we, we, are, we are hoping to restart in another three minutes. In another three minutes, we should be restarting. We just want to make sure that not too many people are eating when we restart. Because persons will be talking and you have the sounds of the knives and the forks and the plates and so on. So we're just trying to see how we can safely restart. In another three minutes, okay?
Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to restart, so we are going to ask that you do everything you are doing as quietly as you can. Eat very quietly, drink very quietly, everything as quietly as you can. I'm um, going to assume that you enjoyed your chicken and your curried goat as much as I enjoyed my fish, in which event I'm going to ask us to put our hands together for the persons who prepared the meal. I must also thank Mrs. Holness Daly for jumping in and ensuring that the movement of the tables went smoothly. She noticed that I was eating at the time, and she knows that a hungry man is an angry man. So she never disturbed me, and she knew that there were persons waiting to have their meal. A hungry man is not only an angry man, but he can be a tricky man as well, because I recall the story of a man who was at a buffet setting, such as we have had here tonight, and he went up for one meal, and then he went up for a second, and then he went up for a third. And when he was going up for the fourth, his wife said to him, Honey, aren't you a little conscious that you're going up so often? Don't you think people will say that you're greedy? He said, no, 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 not at all. I tell them it's for you. <laughs> Tiana Leslie, a student of Hope Hill Primary, is here. I'm going to invite her to present an item, after which Dr. Avian Neal will introduce the guest speaker, and the guest speaker will proceed to speak. So those three things will happen without any intervention from me. Tiana will do her item, Avia will introduce the guest speaker, and the guest speaker will speak. Tiana. Let's put our hands together for her again. Good night, everyone. I will be saying a poem by Luz, Miss Louis Bennett Coverly. Me glad to see you come back, boy, but Lord, you let me down. Me share my sorty, all of my pronies drop a gong. You mean you go to America and spend six one month there and come back not a piece better than how you did go? It's so you come after your turn so long, not even look a language boy, not even look a twang. And your sister will only work one week with America. She talks so have the juicy understand boy you could improve yourself and you get so much fear not even a reaction what are uh, produce it to a stranger as my lamented son who lately come from America they move the laugh after me boy me so them would have said me they not tell her you must have didn't have spent time back at Moko me not know how you and your papa can make it out if you want to please him making things so you bring back something new every time you call him pa this evening when he come call him poo -boo. Thank you very much, Tiana. Let's give her another round of applause. And let's also welcome Dr. Avian Neal as she introduces the guest speaker. Master of Ceremonies, our honored guest, Mrs. Verona Neal and spouse. Our JT, yes, go ahead, woo, all right. 
our JTA past president, Mr. Jasper Gabriel, our JTA regional representative, Mrs. Georgia War Richards, our guest speaker, Mr. Sean Graham, other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> the transformed man who will positively contribute to society must first be a man of sound character. It is this mindset that will cause others to be empowered and unleash their inner genius. Our guest speaker for today, Mr. Sean Graham, principal of Magotti High School since June 1, 2015, lives by this creed and has found that the educational sector is an ideal platform to help many to become self-actualized individuals. Mr. Graham is a past student of Monroe College whose motto foreshadowed his future in Arke Sitam Quis Occultabit, a city set upon a hill cannot be hid. Mr. Graham received his teacher training at Church Teachers College, a bachelor's degree in education with honors from Shortwood Teachers College, a master's in business administration from the, Car the Caribbean Graduate School of Theology, and the professional qualification for principalship, the PQP, from the University of the West Indies, partnered with the National College of Educational Leadership. Mr. Graham served as the chairman of the Hart NSDA Trust Operational Skills Training Center, Magati, and the chairman of the Retirement Primary School. He is a well sought after motivational speaker and mentor who has traveled locally and abroad to share his knowledge and expertise with many. As a member of the First Assembly of God Mandeville, he has served in numerous areas such as member of the church board, president of the men's ministry, and vice president of the National Boys Brigade. As a Christian, he believes that one should be like a thermostat setting the climate and not a mere thermometer that only registers and reflects it. Mr. Graham enjoys reading books with an emphasis on education, politics, leadership, theology, history, economics, and finance. He also takes pleasure in watching and playing football, listening to motivational speeches, hosting religious and civic functions, surfing the internet, and praying. Of all his responsibilities and engagements, none trumps his role as husband to Keisha, his wife of 18 years, and being a father to his three children, two energetic girls, Ocasia and Kesane, and one son, Ocasi. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our multifaceted guest speaker, Mr. Sean Graham. Thank you so much, Dr. Neil. And I know I have to recognize Dr. Neil in a special way. She is my senior guidance counselor and chairman of my school improvement planning committee and also chairman of my curriculum, uh, uh, my school improvement plan, CIT, and head cook and battle washer at Magate High School. I'm extremely proud of her. And so with her introduction, Today's function, Mr. Barton, um, who has been doing work in leading us, I recognize the representative of the Member of Parliament, Honorable Floyd Green. Let me... Movers and shakers in the education landscape for probably cumulatively nearly... in education they have daughters that are in education and probably their years will also add and so within the family probably it's close to 130 140 years of educational service to the nation i think that is extremely powerful and deserve to be recognized i also
um, my good friend at one of the best high school in Jamaica. Not said by me, but the NEI report testifies to it. Oh. Director or regional officer, Mrs. War Richards. I must also traveling on well, um, past student association. Uh, Mr. Orion Lewis and his executive. I think what you're doing here this evening is extremely powerful and I want to recognize you and to encourage you to replicate this across the nation. Mr. Lewis, it's a pleasure to know that you can be all the way thousands of miles and still play a part in the development of our country and saying thank you is a big deal. It is a big deal. It's a big moment. Nobody act like it's a small thing. The young people even want me to talk. It's a big deal. It's a big moment. And so we don't take it lightly that we are here to celebrate and celebrate we must. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good evening. I stand today fully cognizant that as a nation in a few days we will celebrate 60 years of independence. This is also a time not only for celebration but for reflection as to where we are and how far we have come as a nation. We are also eight years away from Vision 2030. And if I should ask, so many of us are really familiar, would have having read in detail, or even perusing the document of Vision 2030, I am confident, and we don't have to raise our hand, that it would be less than 5% of us. And so we are gathered here to celebrate and I come as an evangelist because I am a preacher. And anywhere I go, I preach. So I come as an evangelist of education because I do not like where the country is going. We have developed a lot of things as it relates to our infrastructure. We have electricity, more cars, roads, telephone. I remember when I used to have to go to Mountainside to drop 550 cent Mr. Neil in the coin and punch in, no, punch in, ring round to make a phone call. And when I passed my common entrance, I went to the post office very proudly to collect my telegram. Many persons don't know what that is. And so we have advanced in a number of things. But I am still saying as it relates to the people, I wonder where we are. Because I believe there are some things that's inside of us as a people that have taken us backwards. And while we have advanced 60 years, we are more uncouth as a nation. And so we have smartphones, but the people are foolish. Because someone will be dying and we the foolish people will take out their smartphone and video the person dying instead of responding positively to help. We have become uncouth as a nation because we celebrate badness in our songs, including politicians. They will frown on it when it suits them. But in election time, they know that they have to talk about government badness and bro God and who out and stunting. Because they want to match up. But when we are at a point in our nation where someone can invite someone in their home doing a good deed and that person can turn on that person, murder that person and all our children and we go to the funeral to take it as a joke and a political grandstanding. I'm saying as a nation, we must reflect. And so I am here 
to put forward the values of education. And I have to respect educators like Miss Neal and Mr. Neal. And when we come here, I dare not take it for granted. We jump for our Olympians. We jump up and make noise and we give them millions of dollars to entertain. I stood and watched. And probably I'm guilty. As I brought in an entertainer to entertain my students at school as they went out. And I had to fork out a figure to give that young man to perform song about chop, chop, chop. And he did not spend more than 15 minutes. And as I gave him what I gave him, I reflected because I see the salary of teachers, what they take home. And it's a disrespect. It's a disrespect. He came in 15 minutes to speak crap and was paid something where most teachers work for a month not having that. And so as we celebrate and we do all kinds of things and we celebrate the wrong people and the wrong things, I am here to say that what we are doing is powerful and people like the Neils must be celebrated, must be respected and I am asking the JTA never to stop fighting until teachers are recognized because the only way Jamaica will change is when there is serious emphasis on the education system and don't muddle it off England don't muddle it off America go to Finland and look at how their education system is designed it's only the brightest of the bright that can become teachers and teachers are among the best paid in Finland and so it's something that we have to think about but I'm not here to spend my time with that because I'm here to celebrate a great lady. And great she is. And many times we become familiar with greatness because they're around us every day. But I am here to urge Mrs. Verona Neal as I speak on the topic, do not retire, retire. <laughs> do not retire. R-E-T-I-R-E. -E. Retire. R-E-T-Y-R-E. -E. Because there is a company in Australia that deals with retiring your bicycle. And it means that you can always retire the bicycle to suit the condition that you are riding in. And so as I speak to you, Miss Neil, I, am I have developed my own philosophy. And you don't have to agree with it. But I personally believe that the word and concept retirement is a devilish thing. It came about in 1889 when Otto von Bismarck realized that there was a problem in youth employment. And so he sat down and just designed an age out of the blue. And said, at 70, the state is going to take care. Go and sit down. And it has caused people over time with talent, with power, with much to offer to go home and retire. I am saying, Mrs. Neal, do not retire, retire. You look too good to retire. Just retire and retire. You have too much to offer. So don't allow the system to put you in a box. Don't allow the system to say this is your place now. You have too much to offer. Too much to give. And so how do we retire? We have to start by reimagining our future. Who is to say that you're too old to dream? Set new goals as you go into this period of retirement. Develop new skills because we are never too early to learn. And I'm saying that there are times even in church, in society, they want to tell people at 65 that they have nothing to offer. It's a lie. And I've seen many persons go to an early grave because the society have said to them that there is nothing more to do. I am saying to you, Mrs. Neal, reimagine your future, write new goals, learn new skills, travel to places that you have never traveled before, reimagine your future. Get up every day and look and say, I want to do something new. What is it that I'm going to do now? Because I want a little excitement in my life. 
You're looking too fine, like wine, to retire. So retire. And so we go now to the E, and the E is to engage your mind at all times. Lifelong learning is important. It is so impressive to me. Many times when I look, and I would love to see it more in Jamaica, people collecting their degrees at 72. People at 89, self-actualizing and doing their master's degree, going back to get their high school diploma because they have said that even though I am this age, I am going to be a lifelong learner. And you have to set it in your mind that I am always going to be learned. Go back to school again. Go to heart again. Go and do one of the big programs, Miss Neil. Tell them that me, tell them that they can't charge you anything. Tell them that you want to do something in electronics or artificial um, intelligence. Yeah. Tell them that, Miss Neil. Tell them that Mr. Graham said you must come and you're coming for free to study artificial intelligence because you're going to change your career to do something new and exciting. The children have stressed you out for too long. And I saw the other day, Mr. Gabriel, the salary of teachers in 1980, it was about $35. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Teachers are great, you know. Teachers are magician. Most teachers' children go to university, college, and do things. And when you look at the salary, and you do it, I don't know how teachers do it, but they are magicians, especially female teachers. So the T, as we continue to retire, is that at any age, Mrs. Verona, Neil, you have to be tough. And you have been through the fire already because if you have lived this long and if you did 42 years in teaching, that is a heroic thing. Is that anybody can do teaching? I see people come for one month and run away. Say, no, cannot deal with this. Especially when you come in the primary schools. I have a special respect for primary school teachers. Primary school teachers, one class. How many children, especially the grade one teacher, mess up themselves? You have to hold them and teach them how to write. And when everything done and school, they only big up the grade six teacher. We give the paper results. And then when they go further, they only big up the high school. And then when they go to university, they only big up the university that they go to. You have to remember the foundation. The scripture said, don't forget the rock from which you were hewed. And so primary school teachers, anyone staying 42 years in a primary school setting is a hero among us and must be recognized. And so I'm saying, Mrs. Neal, you have proven that you are tough. And when things get tough, the tough get going. Keep on fighting, mama. You have fought and look how well you are looking. I have seen 35-year-old wish they could look like you. And no Dr. Neal and your daughter doll you up today. But you're looking good. You're looking fine. Continue to be tough and come through the toughness like diamond. The rough. As you continue to re tire, we get to the why. Remain young at heart. Spend time with young people. <laughs> you see the people that you hang around give you a vibe. You ever see some people enter a room and when they enter the room, the energy drop just because they came into the room? Keep young at heart. Dance. Play. Go outside. Read a novel. Read a comic. Sit and watch cartoon. Laugh. Laugh at yourself. Realize that life is fun and it's enjoyment and you can enjoy it because you are young and you are young at heart. We now get so we are at T E so let's, let's go again. We are at R E T Y R and so we now come that you must always replenish your spirit. Replenish your spirit. Because something that most human beings don't do. And this is what caused stress, 
bad mind and problem, we don't replenish our spirit. Because we get too much in sense realm and sense mechanism and allow that to drive us. We must always connect with spirit. And so the importance of stillness, the importance of meditation, the importance of prayer, the importance sometimes of just walking in the morning and listening to the birds and feeling the dew. The importance of just walking barefooted on the, in, in, in the grass and feeling all the things coming through your toes. You are connecting with spirit, replenishing every day your spirit. As we come to the ears, you don't, you're not retire, you retire. Is that you must live life with enthusiasm. Oh my God. We are a country that complains over everything. You hardly find a person that said things going well. We complain. Children have 100 on a television station to watch. No one said they're bored. People have three cars to drive and complaining about gas price. People have more than in the closet full of clothes and still saying they can't find anything to wear. Because they didn't wear that last week. Wear it again this week. It's yours. We're stressing ourselves out. Live life with enthusiasm. We have more to give God thanks for than to complain about. And I'm positive of that. When I look back over my life as a youngster growing up and I see those people in those times over they were grateful. One room house. Five people live in there. And when you go there, red polish. And on Saturday, they go by the genie and they squeeze out some. And they go down on the knee and they clean up and they get the coconut brush and they brush and they get the map and they rub out. And when you come there, man, you can see yourself in there. One room, but they're happy. One little radio station, but they're happy. Children outside playing ring games. Dandy, shandy, and sight, and hide, and seek. And enjoying life. And know all the things at our disposal. But we complain. Tired of life. Wah, wah, wah. Everything is a bother. Everything is a problem. Don't follow them, Mrs. Neal. You are too good for that. You are too powerful for that. As you retire, live your life with enthusiasm. Live every day happy. Every day excited. I tell someone there is no concept as young or old. Because what do you call a 13 year old, old youth who have one day left to live? Is he young or is he old? And how do you compare him to an 80 year old woman who has 40 more years to live? You don't know when is your last day. A man in the Bible called Ahab was trying to hide from death. Him take off him king clothes and put it on a servant and say, you go on a buckle. Come here, go hide from death. And the man just take a sword and just dash it and say, anywhere. And he got back to the king. You don't know when is your last day. So live every day with enthusiasm. God has blessed you richly. Madam, you have so much more to offer. Do not allow the system to get you down. Live life lovely. Live life powerful. Enjoy it with your husband. You and him alone at home now. Enjoy it and do things that you could not do before. Because life is just for living as long as we serve the most high. As I close, I declare upon you, Mrs. Sneal, the spirit of Caleb. Because ten spies, twelve spies went to a place. And when they went there, they found all the problems. And they said that, no, we cannot do it. But Caleb, at the age of 85, said, I am just now ready to conquer some mountain. Because age ain't nothing but a number. If God's spirit get in you, I release Caleb's spirit upon you. And I release the spirit of Sarah upon you too. You know the spirit of Sarah? When Sarah, 90 year old, him, him husband of your hide her and said, No, I'm not my wife, I'm my sister. Because even at that age, she was so beautiful. I release the spirit of Sarah upon you. Go forth, shine, be beautiful. Buy up your isle of filet, buy up your powder, nice up your hair, dull up yourself, and know that God has your back and He has you here for a special purpose. And so I say, 
to all of you, as I close, let us respect those that have set the foundation. Some of we get too bright because we have degree. No respect with grandmother again. Let me tell you something. Life will back you in a corner where your degree can help you. You have to run to your grandmother without no subject and no teeth. If he give you the advice to the solution that you're seeking. God bless you. Thank you very much. And have a good rest of the day. Even if Mr. Graham hadn't said so, it would be easy to note two things about him. One, he's a preacher. Two, he went to Monroe. <laughs> I know that there'll be a vote of thanks later at which appropriate things will be said, but I certainly want to, on your behalf, just to say thanks for that very inspiring and powerful and motivational speech. I, I noticed, however, that there were seven times he told Mrs. Neil how good she looked. And I noticed Mrs. Neil looked at him in a certain kind of way. <laughs> but I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> anyway, as we used to say, fun and joke aside, you know, it was a very good speech, and uh, some time ago, there was a gentleman sitting at a, a table in a setting like this, and uh, it was a dinner, and he was sitting beside a man that was very, very oriental in appearance. Looked like he came from China, Japan, or one of those places. He assumed that the man couldn't speak English, so, you know, when the soup came, he turned to him and he said, you like his soupy? And said, well, okay. And he just nodded his head. And the vegetables, you like it, veggie? And he went on and on. He got some fruit punchy, like it, punchy. <laughs> and then when the time came for the guest speaker, it was the same man who went up and gave a powerful speech in perfect English. And when he came back and sat down beside him, and he said, you like it, speechy? If you like his speech, put your hands together again. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Tiawana Irving, treasurer of the Hopewell Primary School Pass Students Association, will now come to present a check, if you wish. <laughs> will come to make a presentation to the guest speaker. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Mr. Sean Graham, on behalf of the Hopewell Primary School Past Students Association, we would like to express our gratitude for taking the time out to be here with us today to celebrate this big moment in the life of our honoree, Mrs. Neal. The presentation was very short and spicy, and myself was humbled by it. Um, we thank you very much for the delightful manner in which you have spoken. We would like to give you this as a token of our appreciation. Thank you very much. Uh, I used to have a mic stand here somewhere. It just vanished. I don't know where it just vanished. I wouldn't mind if it should reappear. But um, in the meantime, I, I would like to have it. <laughs> Mrs. Gillian Neal Gooden and Company, and uh, Mrs. Neal Gooden and Company are past students of the Hopewell Primary School. They'll be coming to present an item. Right after that item, Mrs. Winsome Blair will appear, and uh, she will read the citation and arrange for the presentation of the citation to Mrs. Neal. But first, it's the other Mrs. Neal who is going to come to us now, Mrs. Gillian Neal Gooden and Company. 
Let's put your hands together for them. Is there another mic that they could uh, borrow? Thank you. Good evening again, everyone. We are going to try our best to give this heartfelt tribute in song to you, Mrs. Neal.
it's very funny that when they came up, they said that they were going to try and sing. Not only did they sing, but they also dance. I think they deserve more than Mr. Graham paid. <laughs> they deserve more than Mr. Graham paid that entertainer to sing about Chop Chop and Wap Wap. You know. <laughs> they, Mrs. Blair, you are going to come forward and uh, read the citation and present the citation to Mrs. Verona Neal. Do you want her to come down here or to stay up there? She can stay. We have so many mics now, I don't know what to do with them. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant afternoon, evening, night to everyone. Guests at the head table, boys and girls, parents, past students, and to the lovely queen of the evening. Citation, the Hopewell Primary School past Students Association presents the citation as a token of appreciation and in celebration of the illustrious career of Mrs. Verona E. Neal, Hopewell District, Watchwell, PA, St. Elizabeth, retired principal. Mrs. Verona E. Neal was born in the community of Cherry Garden, Barbara Hall, PA, St. Elizabeth. And you received your early education at the Barbara Hall and Hopewell's all-age schools. You later continued your educational pursuits at the Hopewell Evening Institute. Your passion for teaching and learning was your driving force. And in 1973, you applied for and were appointed to the position of classroom teacher at your alma mater. Your passion for the classroom blossomed and you later enrolled at the Bethlehem Moravian College in 1980, where you pursued training in primary education with an emphasis in reading. After successfully completing three years of training, you were awarded a teacher's certificate and returned to the Hopewell Primary School, where you spent the next 35 years molding and grooming the next generation. During your tenure of 42 years at the Hopewell Primary School, you wore various hats, such as classroom teacher, senior teacher, and principal. You initiated several school projects such as the talk shop, the restoration of the play field by grading, adding topsoil, and planting grass with the support of the then Member of Parliament, Dr. Christopher Tufton. You added value to the academic growth in the grade four literacy test and the overall performance in the grade six achievement test and sustain students' performance in sports, especially cricket and netball. You mobilized the community, Councillor Jeremy Farmer, and the past students to support all school projects, inclusive of sourcing scholarships and bursaries for GSAT students, as well as constructing a perimeter wall. In your quest to perfect your pedagogical skills, in 1990, you returned to the Bethlehem Moravian College 
where you pursued further studies and obtained a diploma in primary education. Still in the pursuit of higher education, you sought after and obtained a Bachelor's of Arts degree in primary education from the Northern Caribbean University in 2003. And in order to enhance and maintain students' performance, the key to creating a school where failure is not an option lies in transforming the school's culture. And so in 2004, you pursued and obtained a past, sorry, a postgraduate diploma in school management from the Mount St. Vincent University in Canada. You gave of yourself and your time selflessly. You served the Jamaica Teachers Association as secretary, treasurer, and president of the Pedro Plains District Association and assistant treasurer of the St. Elizabeth Parish Association. You also served as a delegate to the JTA Annual Conference for 20 years. You have been a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Williamsfield for the past 20 years and have offered leadership in various departments over the years. You are currently serving as family ministries leader for your local church and as family ministries coordinator for the parish of St. Elizabeth. In your community, you were a member of the Hopewell Youth Club in the 1970s and 80s. And you were a member of the club's netball team. While in college, you served as house leader and you were a member of the Bethlehem College netball team playing goal attack. Your passion for education and sustained student achievement has earned you the admiration and respect of your colleagues community members, church family, and educators within and outside of the confines of the parish of St. Elizabeth. As a result of your sterling contribution, you were recognized by being selected as a recipient of the following awards. In 2001, the St. Elizabeth Parish Association JTA Award. 2009, the Hopewell Past Students Association Award. 2017, the JCDC Award for Long and Outstanding Voluntary Service to Community. The JTA Pedro Plains Association District Award. The JTA Golden Torch Award. In 2018, QEC 41 East Cluster of Schools Award. You have been married to Mr. Bernal V. Neal for the past 48 years. And the union produced two beautiful daughters. Mrs. Neal, as you go off into the golden years of retirement, we hope that the many pleasant memories of time spent in the classroom, the admiration of students you taught, the friendship and appreciation of many colleagues and the proud satisfaction of all your achievements will bring many happy smiles as you relieve those moments. It is our desire for you to have the assurance that your contribution has significantly improved the good name of Hopewell Primary School as success comes through hard work. May God continue to bless you bountifully.
we put our hands together one more time for Mrs. Neal. Mr. Graham and Mr. Gabriel has asked, have asked us to just to apologize because they have to leave. They have to go a uh, far distance. We say thanks to, to Mrs. Winsome Blair, to Mrs. Bobbitt Parchment, and to Mr. Jason German for the part that they have played. German is his name, not his nationality. Incidentally, uh, when I was at school, there were three Germans, I think, well, Few people named German. I remember Lexi German. That's Lexi. Oh, there was Lexi German. There was uh, Bobsy German. And there was Fitzy. I still don't know if Fitzy was a real name. <laughs> but that's the name that I remember. Thanks again. And at this point in time, we're going to ask Mr. Oren Lewis to uh, rejoin us. Uh, he's going to take care of some special presentations after which we'll have the response from Mrs. Verona Neal. Mr. Parch Lewis. Mrs. Neal, once again, it gives me great pleasure on behalf of the Hopewell Primary School Partying and Association for past students, current students, members of the community, ex-colleagues, present colleagues, and every single person here present tonight, present here tonight, we want to present to you this gift, a token of our appreciation for all your hard work, dedication, and commitment and support, not only to Hopewell Primary School, but to the entire St. Elizabeth and the entire Jamaica, and for all those students who have blossomed all over the world, especially in Germany. <laughs> Thank you so much. So this is our token of our appreciation. Thank you so much, and God bless you. And please, please do look after this envelope. Good evening, everyone. Mrs. Neal, let me come closer. All right, so this gift that I'm going to give to you is on behalf of Mr. Raddy Channel. Um, he was unable to come, however, he has sent his love. He has a message for you. And he said, he borrowed the words of Catherine Pulsifer, who said, if the world had more people like you, then it would be a better place. Thanks for your years of service. And he said that his nieces, his nephews, his sisters have benefited from your service. Thanks again. Um, I get so emotional. Uh, I remember Mrs. Neal when, as a child, when I was preparing for common entrance, and I didn't have the kind of support at home that I should have. You took me into your home like your own child. And today, I am here to say, thanks. I might not have money to give you, but I just want to say, one writer said, feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a gift and not giving it. So tonight I am here to express my heartfelt gratitude for the extra help that you gave to me while I was a child. You were a light unto my pathway. And today, that has paved the way for who I am today. I present to you this souvenir 
as a token of my appreciation. Thank you. Treat you like a man is supposed to. You'll never have to cry. No, I know everyone can relate to when they find a special someone. And she's royal, yeah, so royal. And I want her in my life. I never knew anyone so one of a kind. She moves to her own beat. She, she has, has the qualities, qualities of a queen. Think people. She's a queen. Ooh, ooh. ooh what, what a natural beauty. beauty. No need no makeup to be a cutie. She's a queen. <laughs> She's a queen. And when they ask what a good woman's made of. She's not afraid and ashamed of who she is. She's what? So what? Woo! Um, Mrs. Neal, where is your pastor? Anyway, right, I'm gonna hand over. <laughs> I'm gonna hand over to the honorary for her response, Mrs. Neal. Mr. Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Nelson Barton. And I don't have to say, you can see by what you hear, or know by what you hear, that he's a troublemaker, right? <laughs> pastor J. Japet Williams, my pastor, who is pastor of the District of Churches in the Williamsville District. The Member of Parliament's representative, Dr. Carl White. Guest speaker, Mr. Sean Graham, principal of Magatai School. The JTA representatives, Mr. Gabriel and IPP, that's immediate past president, and Mrs. Georgia War Richards, South Central Regional Officer. Other distinguished guests, colleagues, and retired principals supporting here tonight. Past students, family, community members, friends, children, pleasant evening to you all. It is with profound gratitude and humility that I accept the pleasure of your company, your gifts, and the accolades showered on me for my contribution to the development of Hopewell Primary School and community. I am extremely proud of you, my past students, and grateful to you for all that you have said and done. As I listen to your expressions of appreciation, I am humbled, but I must hasten to point out that no man is an island, no man stands alone. My 42 years at Hopewell Primary School has been a journey of climbing mountains and valleys experiencing tears and laughter. But through it all, we have all weathered the storms and gained the victory. My success is not just about me, but the stakeholders who supported me, my colleagues, staff, the parents, students, community members who stood my, by me in work, giving cash, 
kind and encouragement. Thank you very much. I thank God first and foremost for giving me the strength and ability to work I, the work I had done. My husband, Mr. Bernal Neal, who guided my training and development from pre-trained classroom teacher to the rank of principal. My colleagues who were a tower of strength for the academic growth and programs. Parents and past students, locally and abroad, who partnered with the school in fundraising activities, providing bursaries, and other things, other school materials. And I must mention, especially Dr. Burnett Robinson, who has given um, scholarships or bursaries to a number of students over a number of years. Want to applaud him for that. Mr. <laughs> Bayan Foster, who is not here in person, but is here in spirit. I must tell you that without these past students, without their help, it would have been a much more difficult task, and the success that, success that I've had would not be realized. Those who gave their services in coaching, netball, cricket, and football, and here I must mention, Miss Natoya Sims, she could not be here because of work-related things. But she has been our netball coach for a number of years, helping the children, to, the girls to gain victory, winning parish, parish title in netball over a number of years. The school boasts those trophies now for no one for years to come. Miss Atana Sancroft was also assistant coach. In cricket, we had Manzi. Maybe if I call his right name, some of you won't know it, but Manzi. Yes. And Nikki, who would coach the boys and also when I was driving that bus, would also take them out to play cricket. And Bob, that is Miss Lola's grandson. I think those who are on that side know Bob, right? Those were guys who helped out volunteering their service because they wanted to help to push the school. So when those children succeed, is that just big up for Mrs. Neal, but for those people who helped in whatever way they could. Now those parents who often assist in painting and preparing the school for functions, and here I cannot forget Ray Johnson. We were having, we wanted to have the graduation right at school, and he came and he painted the entire inside of the classroom. And we had past students, my sister and others who came in and decorated. When we had that function in 2014, the um, past students homecoming, the place was glorious without it costing us anything because past students volunteered their time. And here, this um, Geraldine Johnson, some of you might not know her, Miss Odie's granddaughter from Hilltop, she was the person who um, sponsored the chairs and tables for that function. And those things look good, make me look good and feel good. But again, I say without the cooperation and help of other people supporting, there would have been little success. And um, I must mention here in sports, I remember the girls went to, to Santa Cruz where they had the netball rally, the parish rally. And they won, and they got a big cake. The cake was taken back to school. That was like Thursday. And on Friday, then there would be the sharing of the cake. And Mr. Gale said, no, but they do too well to get so-so cake. They must get ice cream. And he went to Black River and came back with a big bucket of ice cream. And so the children were able to enjoy themselves. So I lift my hats to all these people. Because without them, it would have been the same. Now, for, for a number of years, I don't know if it's about 15 years or so, Mrs. Sandra James was our PTA president. Mrs. Sandra biggest son of McDain to who I'm talking. And she was not just a PTA president. She was a worker who I could depend on over and over again when we had concerts and so on. And people were rushing home in the night because they were tired and want to get home. 
She would not leave me until everything was packed up and packed away and we were okay. And um, I had bodyguards. Maybe many of you did not know. I would be at school sometimes in the evening. Because, you know, when you are principal and classroom teacher, you have to teach your children in the days when they are there. And when evening comes, that is when you take up the books to do the principal work. And there were people, there were young men, who would be down by the shop at the school gate. And they would not leave until when I was finished and locked up. And I did not really know that they were there protecting me until one evening something was happening and they wanted to lock up and go home. And they sent to tell me that, Miss, we're going to leave now, so you need to leave. <laughs> yes, and um, I cannot forget Cass. You know Cass went parchment. Cass would come and say, Miss, it will appear over here now, you know, and he would draw a stool and sit out at the, the office door in the corridor while I would be inside the office working. I remember clearly one night, the computers were giving trouble, so they wanted um, some fixing. And this gentleman from Mountainside area, he was the person who always come to service the computers. And he fixed the one in the office, then we went up to the computer room upstairs. And there was trouble there, and he was there working, working, working. And it was like about after nine, in the night, you know, we're still at work at school. The guys down by the school gate, not sure what was happening, and they wanted to make sure that I was safe. They came up and said, Miss, you all right? And they came and stood on the car that waited for a while. And when they realized that, okay, I was safe because he was just there fixing the computers. After they left, he said to me, Mrs. Neal, you realize you have some serious bodyguard around here. So I am very, very thankful to my community. It shows love, care, and respect. And without all of these people, so the teachers played their role in helping to develop the educational aspect of the school and sports as well. And, but the community members had a great part to play. And even um, schools, the nearby schools, like when you're having our fundraising activities, their parents would come out and scale the fish, do the bammies and so on cook, and there, there were persons who would transport food to the different places to deliver, and so we had a success because it comes through hard work and the cooperation of everybody. So today, it's really wonderful, a great feeling to be receiving the respect, the show of appreciation for all that had taken place during my tenure. And I'm really, really thankful. The wonderful team of past students who organized this celebration. And to, to, um, to show of my work and worth, you make me feel special. My community members and colleagues, I still feel your love and support. I've had board chairmen who worked harmoniously for the development of this school. Mrs. Phyllis Clark, with, who is no longer with us, Mr. Ian Blair, Mr. Um, Rogers. These were chairmen of excellence. They supported the school program in whatever way they could. And I'm really thankful to these people. So here again I say thank you all. You are here to support me even at this time to celebrate with me. I'm very, very grateful. And I really feel your love. Be blessed. Thank you all. Let's hear it one more time for Mrs. Neal. I'm going to suggest that someone gives you a better pen. You seem very determined to leave it behind in any event. Uh, again, I'm sure the appropriate words will be said by the person giving the vote of thanks. And in fact, I invite at this point in time, Reverend Colmy Sims a student, Hopewell Primary School, to move the vote of thanks.
before I really say anything this, this night, I just want to ask all the past students of the Hopewell Primary School at this time, just to stand in honor of the honoree. Thank you so much. Master of Ceremony, the guest speaker in his absence, the representative from the Ministry of Education, representatives from the Jamaica Teachers Association, also in their absence, Dr. Carl White, political representative, Ladies and gentlemen, good night. I want to bring to your attention that an event like this cannot happen overnight. The wheels started rolling some weeks ago. This requires planning and an experienced driver to land us here safely on tonight. We have been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very motivated and dedicated colleagues of the Hopewell Primary School Past Student Association who know their job and are result oriented. Therefore, it is upon these grounds I rise as a proud member of this association to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of this association. I must stress that I cannot thank everyone enough for their involvement and their willingness to take on this completion of this task even beyond their comfort zones. First, I must say my sincere gratitude to the Almighty Father for making today's event a grand success, tonight's event. By his blessings and grace, we are able to make this event what it is in this light, I express gratitude to Mistress Judine Holness Daly for leading the devotion. And you know, whatsoever we do, the first thing we should do is to invoke the presence of the Almighty. Thanks to every single one of you for your bookings on flight number 2022. I recognize that you could have chosen any other airline, but you choose airline, Hopewell Primary School, PSA, and the entire crew is ever grateful. I want to express sincere appreciation to our flight attendant, Mr. Nelson Barton, for being able for the able way in which he navigated this platform and you you will agree with me that we had some rough weathers you know some turbulences along the way but he was able to land us safely so i am immensely thankful to him for his efforts towards anchoring us safely tonight. His own ideas and elegance, his sense of humor, gave us enough indication to say he was the right choice for this function. And I borrowed his word, his tagline, to our honorary, you have come a long way, Mrs. Neal. That's what he said. 
and that speaks volume to me and I hope to all of us tonight. Yes, as teachers, those of us who know what it means to be in the classroom, to be in charge of students and especially when you are in some of the bigger classrooms. You, 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 you know, Mrs. Blair, when sometimes you have, have sometimes gone by, you are standing, standing before like 30 odd, 40 odd students. It's not an easy, easy task. So I must say, and I agree with our flight attendant on tonight, that you have come a long, a long way. What must I say? In his absence, our dynamic orator, Mr. Sean Graham, and for those of us who don't know, he's my son. And for those of us who don't know the primary school that he gained his foundation, the Mountainside Primary School. So ever since he became the man of choice for this occasion, I knew immediately that we were in for a treat. I knew then that this discourse promised to whet our appetites and leave us craving for more. You will agree with me that Mr. Graham did just that. You know, I, I, I jot down some of his thoughts and I would say to me this could be the theme throughout, you know, his presentation. He looked at Mrs. Neal and he said, you look good. He says, don't R-E-T-I-R-E. -E -E. He says, R-E-T-Y-R-E. -E. And I'm not sure those of us won't get the essence of what he was really trying to say. But I get it. And I hope we all get that tonight. Don't retire. So teachers, I am passing on these words to you. Don't retire. Don't R-E-T-I-R-E. -E, but retire. R-E-T-Y-R-E. -E. And he says, as a retiree, she is to reimagine her future. And I'm passing this on to all of us. This is what we need to do. And as an advocate for the teaching profession, you know, where some persons feel that teachers are getting a whole lot of money, but for the prospective teachers, I'm saying to you at this time, you have it all wrong. But we must say thanks to persons like, you know, Mr. Sean Graham for being so active in this field. To Mr. Otis Brown, the Regional Director, Ministry of Education, Region 5. I just want to say to him that we thank him wholeheartedly for gracing us with his profound words of encouragement and gratitude. And we share the same sentiment 
that Mrs. Neely is a stalwart educator. You know, there are times when we should have scattered the roses. But sometimes we forget to be grateful even for the little. So we just want to say thanks to Mr. Otis Brown for his greetings. To Mrs. Georgia War Richards, I didn't get that phrase too well. But she said something like, we can refer to both Mr. and Mrs. Neal as the JTA, who can remember that word? JTA what? Bessies. All right. And you know what that means. They were activists in the Jamaica Teachers Association. All right. But Mr. Jasper Gabriel, the immediate past president of the JTA, we want to salute him in his absence. We thank both of them for their vital contribution to this afternoon's function. He said she has dedicated so much of her life to the teaching profession. And he draws uh, the anal analogy of the ten virgin. Ten lepers were cleansed, but only one returned to say thanks. And we are happy tonight that the Past Student Association sees it fit to put on a function like this on tonight. And as we go, I want to continually say kudos to the Past Student Association. You have done a you have done a good job. And I'm sure that Mrs. Neal is well satisfied. To our soloists, Mr. Ed Nimard, Mr. Leon Williams, and Lee Williams, and I want to include Tiana Leslie, who did one of Miss Lou's poem. You all played an essential role on this program. These musical items set the pace for what was to come. And I just want to say we thank you all for your participation. To the, uh, to Mr. White, who Dr. Carl White, who deputized for the Honorable Floyd Green, we want to say thank you for being here and addressing us. And he says this, these very important words, you must always remember that you must leave your mark wherever you go. And this is not just for Mrs. Neal. She has left her mark. But I'm always trying to say to our today's teachers that it is very important wherever you go, do not leave until you leave your mark. If you, if you go somewhere, even for, for three months, even for a month, do not allow that month or that three months to pass without making your mark. It is very, very important. I am very grateful to Mr. Oren Lewis, the president of uh, the Hopewell Primary School Past Student Association for his efforts in steering this association and towards anchoring this function. 
the elegance of his thoughts and interpretation of everything here this afternoon was so phenomenal. He remembered the hard work and dedication of the stalwart of a woman in the person of Mistress Veruna Neal. It would be thoughtless of me if I did not mention the wider community that worked alongside Mr. Lewis to get the job done. Mrs. Neal tells us no man is an island, no man stands alone. So I must say a special thanks to the alumni abroad, both here and abroad, who donated to this function in different ways. We could not do it without their assistance. We acknowledge the presence of Pastor Japhet Williams and say thanks to him for the blessing of the meal. To the catering staff, we say a big thank you for the sumptuous meal provided. Mistress Nisha Smith, not sure if she's here, but Mistress Nisha Smith has created an ambiance that we can clearly define as our war moment. You know, when I stepped in this afternoon, the afternoon, I looked around and I said, yes. So we say kudos to her and we thank her for the time and the effort she exhibited. I want to say to the Niels Trio, Jillian and company, some person was asking, who is the other who is the other lady on the other side? But I envelope them this afternoon and say to the Niels trio, they really permeate the atmosphere with that item. You were here to guide my way. Thank you. And when they sang, when they sang it, I in my own self, I could feel some goose pimples. So I could just imagine the feeling of Mrs. Neal to hear her children, her sister, said, you have guided my way. Thank you. And we are saying to you tonight also, thank you. A special men mention to our venerable honoree, Mistress Verona Neal, for being the catalyst that inspired us to be here on tonight. You stand as a pillar of power in the field of education, and we just want to say thank you for your untiring efforts and a job well done. And we must say thanks to your husband, Mr. Beville Neal, and all other family members for lending her to us for these few hours. I also want to thank the people who worked behind the scene to execute this event, the technical arrangement team, the stage setting team, all musicians, and all housekeeping staff, you all did a wonderful job. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I would like to say that we are all most grateful to all present, that we are all grateful to all present in this room. We thank you for being with us this evening. You have created good sparks and gave new insight as to the value placed on our educators. This is really noteworthy and amazing. We are all inspired by some great words. 
The speakers have enlightened our minds and paved new paths for the next generation of teachers. Thanks to all for adorning this occasion. You really look good on tonight. So I want to say thanks in a million. And as we vacate this room, we pray that the strength of the Almighty will journey with us. Thank you so very much. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is my duty and it is my pleasure to convey the vote of thanks so ably moved by Reverend Colmy Sims and to say thanks to her for having played her part. We have come to the end of the evening's proceedings. And you know the great poet once said, the heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but they, while their companions slept, were toiling upwards through the night. The poet also meant the heights by great women reached and kept, and the formula is still uh, the same. Toil upwards through the night while your companions sleep, if sleeping is what they want to do. At a time when role models are few and far between, it is refreshing, it is inspiring, and it is reassuring to know that we have persons like Mrs. Neal, whom we can aspire to imitate, whom we can aspire to emulate. I said at the beginning, Mrs. Neal, you have come a long way. What I did not tell you that was that you have got a long way left to go. That is our hope for you, and it is our prayer that God will continue to guide you, to protect you, to preserve you. He will continue to strengthen in your hands for the work that you have left to do. And at the end of your time, he will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. May God continue to bless you, and may God continue to bless us all. We have the singing of the national anthem left to do, and the lady is touching me. I believe she wants to borrow my microphone. <laughs> and also you, sir, would like to borrow you as well. So we need to extend our heartful, sincere gratitude and thanks to you for being our MC tonight. But before I do, I'm going to borrow something that you said earlier tonight. And um, I like your MC. Eh? <laughs> Just as what you were saying, we appreciate you, sir, for the length and journey you took to be here with us tonight. And we are grateful that you had taken the task to be our master of ceremony, a task that you so duly completed. And once more, from the Hopewell Primary School Pass Students Association, we want to present this token as our gratitude. Thank you. And thank you very much. My wife will be convinced when she sees it that I did go where I said I was going. <laughs> we are going to stand for the singing of the national anthem, and I'm going to invite someone who has a special talent for singing. I don't know who it will be to lead us, at least to start it, and we will follow.
Jamaica, Jamaica, Jamaica land we love. Teach us true respect for all. Stir response to duty's call. Strengthen us the weak to cherish. Give us vision lest we perish. Knowledge send us, Heavenly Father, grant true wisdom from above. Justice, truth be ours forever, Jamaica land we love. Jamaica. Jamaica, Jamaica land we love. Thanks again for coming. It is a good for us to have been here. May the good be with you safely to your respective homes.